Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So today, PCV systems. What are they, what do they do, where'd they come from? Nobody really knows. Actually y'all, I'm kind of pulling your leg on that one. So PCV, that stands for positive crankcase ventilation. Now, why do we need to vent our crankcase? So as the engine runs, gases do build up in the crankcase and they have to go somewhere. Now, if you sealed up an engine and there's no exits for those gases, they're actually gonna build up so much pressure you're gonna start blowing gaskets. Wheelies, now they had a few solutions for this. A couple of them is a draft tube like I've got on here right now. And that was like an early World War II thing, but also later on like trucks and wagons I believe had that. Civilian models seem to usually come with what I'm about to install, and that's an actual PCV valve. Now, if we've got positive pressure, we're gonna need some negative pressure. So the way this works, this valve runs in line up to your intake manifold, where some vacuum can pull those gases back in through the intake and actually be burned off. So you're getting a little bit better fuel mileage, you're burning off some excess gases. It's just a win-win. This draft tube, like I have on the other hand though, it really just relies on the wind as you go down the road to kind of pull them gases out. It also creates a good spot for some oil and stuff to start leaking out of your engine because it's just an open tube coming out of the side of that valve cover. Now, like I said, these engines wouldn't have come with a draft tube. It should have been the PCV valve like I'm about to install. When I went to rebuild the engine that came in this Jeep, it had that draft tube on it. Just come to find out it had a bunch of like GPW parts on it. It was a really messed up engine. This one came out of a 59 model CJ5, but when I was putting it all back together, I seemed to have lost this, so I just threw the draft tube back on for the meantime. But now I'm ready to do this right, route it up, get up there to the intake. It should make this engine run a lot better and last a little longer. Now, of course, this is an F head engine. I believe the L head's pretty similar. I think it's in the same location and everything. But down here's your exhaust valves. This is actually a valve cover. So this is that draft tube. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and then I'll show you what we got over here to replace it with. All right, so here's that old draft tube. That's what the inside of it looks like. You can see it just draws air down through there. It draws them gases out, but it's literally just, just a big tube, just a piece of pipe. But what we got here, so this is our actual PCV valve. This comes apart. It's serviceable, you can clean it and reuse it. And inside of there, there's a little cone piece with a spring on it. And you can see on here, it is directional. There's your arrow. So you wanna make sure you put this in the right direction to flow. Now here we got a new gasket. And this is a little 90 degree elbow. I'll show you why we need that here in a minute. Now this right here is the actual cup that's gonna replace where that draft tube bolted to. I don't remember this being new old stock, but it sure looks new old stock. So I'm gonna guess this is original equipment. Looks like it's been sitting around for a little while. I might throw a little black paint on that or something before I bolt it on there. But let's go back over to the valve cover. I'll show you how all this is gonna work. All right, y'all, so I kind of jumped the gun. I went ahead and put all this together and painted it black. And when I put it on here, I went ahead and put sealant around this washer and bolt. Now, normally this will go down inside the cup. It's a smaller bolt. Somebody had broke this off at some point, I guess, and the boss in here is kind of shallow. They drilled it out to a bigger size. One day I might go in there with a helical or something, but this should be fine for now. Won't want any vacuum leaks though. That's why I did the sealant. Let me show y'all what I got here now. So I kind of forgot a few fittings. I had to run to the hardware store and get them. So this breather cup right here, that's gonna be an eighth inch MPT. Then we've got a 90, that's quarter inch MPT. Quarter inch nipple, that goes into the PCV. Then we've got a quarter inch coupler. And then finally, it's a 5 16th inverted flare to a quarter inch MPT. 
all this is MPT thread, so it should be self-sealing. But you can go ahead and do yourself a favor and put a little pipe dope or some tape on it to kind of lubricate them threads. It keeps it from galling, helps you get a little bit tighter. All right, now that we've got this side figured out, let's look at the intake. Intake's pretty simple. Going into the intake, that's quarter inch MPT. And then we've got another 5 16th inverted flare right here. Now that we've got the hard part out of the way, all the fittings are on here. I'm gonna find a piece of wire. I'll make me a template, figure out where all my bends need to be. Then I'll grab a piece of 5 16 brake line and bend up the final tube. All right, so I found me some copper wire here. It's the straightest piece, but it'll still do the trick. So I'm gonna come out of here, do a 90, and then we'll figure out what we need to do on the other side. Here's my template. I think it turned out pretty good. Now, there's a lot of value in knowing what lengths you're gonna need, how long of a piece of line you're gonna need. Of course, I left this in long because that's the side going to the intake and we can trim it in to fit. The important thing to know is where this bend is and this bend and this bend because that's gonna take us around to the other side of the engine and finally hook into that intake. All right, so let's take this over to the toolbox and we'll transfer this to a real piece of hard line. Well, here's something I didn't think about. So that's about as short as I can get that bend, still be able to flare it. And when I put it on down here, you can see it comes out right in front of our water pump. So that's not gonna work, but I've got another plan. I swapped out the inverted flare fitting for a compression fitting. So now it's quarter inch MPT to a 5 16 compression fitting. What that means is I can do that bend now and then cut it off as short as I can get it where I still got enough to stick up in there and hopefully it'll clear this water pump. Well, I think that's about gonna wrap this up. It didn't quite go as planned and I had to pivot a few times and I had to keep running back to the parts store, but I finally got it all knocked out. I'm kind of glad it didn't go as planned because I wasn't originally planning on using that copper tubing, but while I was at it, while I was buying more parts, I thought, man, that'd be kind of cool. And I think it turned out really neat. One more important thing I did want to mention is on your oil dipstick tube, there's a little port there. And that port will connect back to your oil bath air filter. And that's pretty important to make your air filter be as efficient as possible, but it also means that your engine is breathing in clean filtered air. I've talked to people about this and they actually said, if everything's not hooked up and sealed correctly on this PCV system, that your engine's actually not gonna like idle right. It's not gonna be as efficient. And of course it makes the life of the engine last longer. This ain't the most exciting project, but something that's gotta be done. I'm glad I can show y'all that things don't always go as planned. Sometimes you just gotta think on your feet. You gotta problem solve and figure out how you're gonna do something. I can think of several other ways to do this. You don't have to use all the fittings I used. You don't have to take the path I took. 
I could have went down under the water pump and around and wouldn't have had that issue with the original setup. I just thought it was cool to take the path I took, especially with that copper tubing. Now, as usual, everything used in this video, I'll have linked down in the description. Also, I've got a really good article. I'm going to link down below. Ton of information that explains all this PCV stuff and troubleshooting and how things are supposed to be hooked up. It's a really good read. I appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all next time.